Here's a tweet from Kathy Griffin about her new film, A Hell of a Story. Now that I'm about to become a globally recognized movie star, I want to stop being so goddamn down to earth. I'll walk around all day in Fendi ski goggles with a Louis Vuitton bag. Get used to it, fuckers. Well, we are so honored to have comedian, legend, and now movie star Kathy Griffin back on AM to DM. Humble as always. Humble as Humble always. Humble as always. And yet no no got ski goggles or the, the bag. I actually do have those ski goggles, and I got them from like an old school uh, gift bag. Like back in the huh. day when huh. I won my two Emmys, have I mentioned that? <laughs> they would give like real things. And I found one. I'm like, first of all, I don't really ski, but I thought it would look uh, impressive. And uh, the Louis Vuitton bag, I might return. Because oh, it's okay. a little about, yeah. like it's okay. a little loud. All right. Well, next time you'll have to, you know, wear your movie star accoutrement. I do have here. Valentino shoes on, the, which are very, very expensive. I love this. Although I think I could have gotten them a payless. And I can but, say they, they do say Valentino on the bottom. So thank you for confirming. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I shot the beef. Oh, that, that's, I am wearing underwear it's all today. What a surprise! It's the internet, so everything, anything is okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, uh, listen, I want to talk about uh, this film, which is part comedy special, part documentary. Yes. But um, I was really struck by some of the scenes in which you are. Did you watch it? I I did watch it. Thank you. I the whole thing. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. You're welcome. Yeah, that's, that's like a big deal. I did a lot of interviews with like so tell me about the movie. <laughs> what happened? No, like I actually that? watched it. But there, so the first third is like raw. Well, okay. that, that's what I was going to ask okay. you about. Where you are, you are literally like crying on camera. Um, you are totally burned out. You are processing oh, yeah. all of your emotions. Why did you want to show those really raw scenes? Be because a big part of the message of this movie is I took a rather infamous photo over two years ago of myself <laughs> holding a Trump mask with ketchup on it that then went to TMZ and then the uh, White House, uh, the Trump family, the Department of Justice um, spread it out in the memosphere around the world within hours and then linked me to ISIS, as in saying that Kathy Griffin has joined ISIS not plausible at all. And um, but it became like a real thing. And so I was put under a federal investigation on the no fly list, et cetera, et cetera, under a real live investigation, interrogated under oath, which has never happened in the history of this country by the feds. And they were considering charging me with conspiracy to assassinate the president of the United States. So I wanted to make this film to really show I didn't break the law. I didn't violate the First Amendment in any way. You can be as offended by that photo as you want. But I really wanted people to know that if you or one of your kids puts up a photo like that, that they shouldn't have to go through that. It was unprecedented. But I feel like, you know, we're seeing so many dog whistles now. And this right. administration has done so many crazy it's things. not even like dog whistles then. anymore. So. It's just it's so scary. It's yeah. really bad. Young people, please get active. I know online stuff is good and marching is good, but like run for offices, support people, go to your local town halls, vote down ballot. It's not all about the presidential. It's about the state representatives and the congressmen and the congresswomen and the United States senators. Like the uh, city council is an elected office yeah. and they can affect your life sometimes even more than the president. Although in my case, it came right from the president. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so geez. I, ha I wanted to show the, the realness. Um, and, it, and you guys, the first third is like, seriously, it's like iPhone it footage is. and I didn't have mics. Nobody would meet with me. No studio would talk to me. They still won't. I'm persona non grata everywhere, but here, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank happy, you. Happy to have you. I'm so excited. You're well, talking to me. Yeah. Well, one of the things you mentioned is that, you know, of course it was two years ago and yeah. initially the, the tide of responses, like looking back, uh, you know, uh, people were in incredibly harsh. She's really, ruined the resistance. Yes, it really She's condemned you. ISIS. And, and thinking about um, the political moment that we're in now, do you think the photo now would elicit the same reaction? I don't. I really don't. And the photo was also pre Weinstein, pre Me Too. And I think now women are finding our voices. And look, I'm a 58 year old woman. I'm a stand up comedian. I've been in the business 40 years. I've been Me Tooed and Time's Up more than I can tell you. And so, honestly, it's a good thing that women are coming together more because I have to say, as I've been an ally to the LGBTQIA2345 six, seven community forever. But what I've also said to my female friends is as a feminist, we have to admit like the gay community is just really good at getting together and mobilizing and putting differences aside. And I think frankly, women, we can still kind of divide and conquer sometimes and that's not good. So we have to mm. stick together. We are 51% of the population, 51% of the voting population, and we have to have our voices heard for once. And I really think this happened to me because I'm a 50, eight-year-old chick. I really do. Like, they didn't do this to any of the guys who allegedly threatened the president. Mm. Well, uh, uh, speaking about some incredible women, you recently <laughs> tweeted, hey, the squad, this white lady is with you all the way. This is a problem white people have to take care of. It is our job, and we know we have to do it. We will not let you down. 
because you have to deal with this racist president. Um, you know, as you mentioned, uh, you uh, literally were targeted by the president um, as yeah. someone who has dealt with this before. What advice do you have for the squad? Well, I think that our, first of all, I think the squad, like my new thing is, can you guys fold in some more ladies of color? Like seriously, I love the squad and I love the four of them doing stuff together. But, you know, add in, you know, I know that there's like an, an indigenous woman in there, like add in more people. So Americans from, you know, middle America or the Trumpers or whatever, the QAnons or whatever, we need to get used to seeing you guys more and seeing you speak out and how smart you are. So. The reason I think we need to face racism right now is it is really in our face and it's affecting our policy, which affects everyone. Like that's the thing people that racists don't understand. Eventually it all turns on you with this administration. I mean, this guy is so far off the rails and he's so deeply ingrained with a racism probably founded in nothing. Like I don't even know what's wrong with them. And the way people jump onto that bandwagon, I've never seen anything like it. And I was around for Watergate, honey. Like I remember watching those hearings as a kid. And so I can't believe it's happening even in a worse way in my lifetime. So ladies, united we stand, divided we fall, people of color. We, this is our fault. We let this happen. And so we want to help you. Let us know how we can help you because we all got to stand this together. But we do have to fight racists and white people. It's our problem. We yeah. created it. Just admit it and deal with it. Yeah, I mean, and, and on that note, like one of the things you said earlier is that, you know, women need to be um, amplifying other women's voices. Obviously, like white women uh, need to get it right and, yeah. uh, and be doing our part. Um, what would you like to see from Nancy Pelosi in terms of uh, her support of the squad? Well, first of all, I love me some Nancy, and I'll tell you why. I think she has a plan. You know, there is something she knows how to do, and that is called whip votes. So be honest, even though we have the House now, right? The Dems finally won the House. We won 41 seats. I live in California. We won, we flipped 11 seats. But guess what? Every time she whips the vote, she can't get enough votes to even start an inquiry on impeachment. So it's not that Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to impeach this guy. Are you kidding? She, believe it or not, there's still a lot of centrists in the Democratic Party who just eat a victory through. And, you know, they may lose their district, meaning we could lose the House. God Gosh forbid. And well, I'm being like really clean on this show. <laughs> Fuck forbid is what I meant. Um, and so I think she has a plan. And let me tell you something. Nothing gets by Nancy. And I think one thing she's being really smart about is people are acting like there's discord between the squad or the more left part of the party and Nancy Pelosi. Trust me, she knows everything they're doing and she knows every press conference they hold. And I think those young women are also smart about deferring to her when necessary, but also if they want to differ with her, that's okay as well. I think what Nancy is doing is kind of using the squad to like slowly move the more centrist Democrats back to reality, normalcy, because, you know, I mean, I, I loved Clinton as a president. I mean, I'm glad it wasn't married to him, you know, but I mean, he balanced the budget, but people forget Bill Clinton was a centrist. Like he wasn't like a super lefty. Jimmy Carter, the president of my dreams, he was a real lefty. He actually put solar panels on the ceiling of, on the uh, roof of the White House that Ronald Reagan took down. So we're, we're not even really center anymore. We've really kind of gone right of center. So we've got to have a paradigm shift and it's okay to be a lefty. It's okay to let them call you names like that. They don't, even know what socialism is when they call these poor women socialists they have never been to a socialist country okay so i have i performed there because i couldn't <laughs> get any work here <laughs> well um thinking about the movie uh, again um, one of the things that you talk about uh, at length is uh how hard it was to lose your relationship with anderson cooper and of course his mother recently passed away oh yeah have you been in touch with him at all about that no anderson's not really wired that way like he and jeff zucker are kind of cut from the same cloth and i've known jeff for a long time and look a lot of these older white guys hate me and they've hated me for years because I've been a ballsy chick my whole career and I've never learned my lesson. And I've been like this since I did my first commercial when I was 17 years old. And, you know, misogyny and sexism is a big part of my message. And as I get older, you guys, I don't have a fuck left to give. I really don't. And this administration has just pushed me over the edge. And so I don't worry about like the Jeff Zuckers and the old dinosaurs anymore, the, the check signers, I call them, because they're still the same old white guys who told me 20 years ago I was going to be nothing and I was never going to make a living. And, you know, I am happy to say I love what I do. And thank goodness even the president can't keep people from buying tickets. But I did lose, honestly, probably about 75 percent of my friends that didn't come back. So, you know, it was it's it's difficult. But let me tell you, get real clarity. Get yeah. real clarity. Yeah. I mean, it has to be devastating. Like, 
that many, that percentage of friends, that particular friendship, it has to be devastating to watch it disappear. And well, especially, especially when I, you want to be I really was really in love with, with Anderson's mom, the great Gloria Vanderbilt. And she let me call her Glow Vandy. And she gave me so many life lessons. We would chat. And I actually kind of knew her better than Anderson in a way. And she, I, I hear her voice t today saying things like, you know, your whole life can change in one phone call. And that's true. And in a time like this, when it's hard to have optimism, your life can change in one phone call. It's happened to me if I got a certain job. Maybe it's happened to you, but it really can happen. So stay optimistic in that way. And she would also, also Gloria would always tell me, um, well, there's always more and you're never done. And being a workhorse, I love that. You know, I love working. I love doing shows. I love being on TV. I love touring. I love making people laugh because you're never done and there's always more. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that is a great note to leave it on. So thank you. thank you so much for joining me. Well, you're great. Such a thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. And Kathy Griffin, a hell of a story, story, excuse me, is in theaters July 31st. Up next, we're talking about the Emmy nominations. <laughs>